we're going to talk a little bit about um, some of the organization on the periodic table and talk about the properties of metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. So um, Dobriner was one of the first scientists who developed a way to organize elements, and he based um, these groups on similar properties, and he put them into groups of three called triads. Newlands came along and took that a step further. He came up with what's called the law of octaves. The same properties repeat every eighth element. So he basically tried to arrange our elements into seven rows of seven elements each. Now this didn't always work. The same properties didn't actually always repeat every eighth element. So Mendeleev came along, and he's who we consider the father of the periodic table. He put the elements into columns according to their properties and according to increased atomic mass. Now, he did not say that the rows had to be a specific length. And he left blank spots for undiscovered elements. He understood that there were perhaps more elements out there than what we knew of at the time. Um, and he said that the properties of the elements depend on the atomic mass, which we know now is not true. Mosley came along and used x-rays to study protons, and what he found was that atomic number increased according to Mendeleev's chart. So at this point, they feel like um, modern periodic law says that the properties of the elements are a function of their atomic number, meaning that the properties of the elements depend on the atomic number. Now we know now that neither one of those is true. So, let's look at our first learning target. We're going to describe the properties of metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. We're going to be able to classify based on properties, and we're going to be able to classify based on location. So, you guys have already color-coded. You know that all the metals are over here to the left of what we call the stair-step line. Along the stair-step line are our metalloids, and over here in the upper right are our nonmetals. So each vertical column is called a group. Now columns go up and down. Each horizontal row, going left to right, is called a period. The A groups, which are columns 1, 2, and 13 to 18, are called representative elements. These are the ones that follow um, patterns that we can predict. The B groups are what we call the transition elements. Now this is what we call the transition metals and the lanthanides and the actinides. So if we have a group 1A in period 4 element, if we look in group 1A, the first column, in row 4, that's potassium. A period 6 calcogen. So calcogens are in column 16, and in row 6, we have polonium. And group 11, which would be column 11, period 5, row 5, we would have silver. So the properties of the elements, um, we found that we arranged elements in order uh, according to their properties. Excuse me. Elements in a group or a vertical column are going to have similar properties. Now each column in the periodic table has a characteristic electron configuration. In other words, their electrons have very similar arrangements. So what we found is that the properties of the elements actually depend on the electron configuration, not on the atomic number. So um, here are the families, you know, column one are your alkali metals, column two is the alkaline earths, we've got our transitions, our lanthanides, actinides, um, and all of our others, calcogens, halogens, noble gases. And remember that the endings of the periodic table are characteristic to a column. So that's what we're talking about here. You know, all of the alkaline earth metals end in S2, so they're all going to behave similarly. So metals are good conductors of heat and electricity. They're malleable, which means they can be pounded into sheets. They're ductile, which means they can be stretched into wires. They have a hard, shiny appearance. Now here's where uh, what, what becomes really important when we're talking about metals. They have three or less valence electrons. So their dot diagrams, their Lewis structures, would have three or less electrons. They tend to lose electrons to form compounds, and this is going to be important in the next unit. And metallic character is going to increase as you go down and across. So the greatest metallic character is going to be down near francium on the bottom left-hand side of the periodic table. Properties of nonmetals are pretty much going to be the opposite. They're poor conductors of heat and electricity, which makes them good insulators. Um, the solids, when they are solid, are dull and brittle like sulfur and phosphorus. Um, most of them are gases at room temperature. 
Um, they have five or more valence electrons. So, you know, in their dot diagrams, they're going to have five or more dots. And this is, excuse me, this is going to cause them to gain electrons to form compounds. Now, these are the ones on the right-hand side of the periodic table. So they have the least amount of metallic character because they're way up here on the um, right and the greatest metallic character way down here at the bottom on the left. Now, metalloids are what we consider semiconductors. They're okay conductors. They're not great, but they're not what we would consider an insulator either, like think aluminum foil. Um, they share electrons to form compounds. They have properties of both metallic and metallic characteristics. And they're going to follow the stair-step line.